How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Trinkshoe Repair channel. If you're new here, my name's Dan and today's video is something I was really excited to film for you guys because we have these extremely unique crocodile skin handmade shoes. Not only are we doing a full restoration with new soles, but we are also adding crocodile eyes. Okay, so we're doing a bit of taxidermy today. Is it going to be successful? I have no idea. Am I excited to do it? Yes, I am. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so once again, welcome back guys. Hope you're doing fantastic wherever you are in the world. Now, what am I doing? I'm telling you about the job, aren't I? So here we are. There's a bit of a cool background to this shoe. It's a male in job, uh, the customer from Belgium and the customer actually bought them in New York, Manhattan uh, over 10 years ago. So a uh, bit of a cool story. I believe he said they cost around 400 pounds and they're handmade and they're real crocodile leather. So the job we're doing, uh, they originally had a leather sole, but they've just had a, a crude rubber sole just plonked on top. So we're going to sort that out, replace all the leather nicely. Uh, they also have, if you can see there, a mock welt. So that is uh, it's basically a fake welt. So we need to replace that because it's all cracked and missing. Uh, but the main point of the video, as I said, is we are adding eyes. Real crocodile eyes, well not real, but glass crocodile eyes. Um, obviously it's not to everybody's taste, but I think it's going to look quite cool once it's done. I've got to figure out how to do it and then see if it looks good once it's done. So. Uh, I've blabbed too much, let's get to it. Right, so we're going to start by getting a shoe on the last and then removing everything that needs to be removed. This sole's a bit tough to remove, so I'm just going to heat it up a bit to loosen the old glue. Okay, now I've got that off, and uh, oh dear is one word for it. The footbed is absolutely trashed and perished, so we're going to have to make a new footbed. So straight away, this job just got a lot more extensive. And there's the other one, it's even worse. Crikey, what are we going to do? Well, you know there ain't nothing to it but to do it. Luckily, it's quite a simple construction, so I'm just going to take out the... Uh, original half insole, so even that's got some crocodile skin on it, and the original footbed, all in one piece, there he is, and then it should be simple enough to make a new one and glue it in place before we start putting soles on. So I think I'm just going to use a bit of stripper to loosen up these last bits and especially the mock well just so it doesn't pull any of the uppers away So there we are, my friends, two shells of shoes, just the uppers left. Hello there. Now, I think before we put the new mock welt on and the footbed and the soles and such, we're going to do the uppers now whilst everything's open and accessible to us. So let's have a look at these uppers. So the original colour of these is uh, much lighter and unfortunately they've had loads of dark brown polish put over them. And the problem with crocodile skin or any reptile skin is it does stain quite easily. So. I'm gonna see how much of the polish we can get off. We're gonna use the Saphir Reno mat, and then I've got a special product to show you called Reptan 
clues in the title as to what it does. Um, now, just the feel of crocodile skin, you know, it's really hard to describe, or I find it hard to describe anyway. It's almost hard, but very soft and supple. You've got to touch it to experience it for yourself. But anyway, let's see what we can do. Now what you want to do with Reno Matt, and I actually didn't realise this when I first started using it, is once it's on, let it do its magic for about 15 minutes. 15 minutes, and that'll loosen up the polish and then wash it off. So that's been 15, so we're going to wash off the Reno Matt with the Saphir cleaning lotion, and hopefully some of the old polish. So I've given it a big wash and a big scrub, uh, made a mess. The reason it's so dark is because it's very, very wet. So what I want to do is let it air dry very delicately for about an hour and then come back and see what it looks like. And just while I'm letting that dry, I've got a surprise for you guys because we're going to go out of the shop and head up the street to Tring Zoological Museum where they have all the stuffed animals. So if you're squeamish, skip past this bit. But the reason being, we're going to move on to doing the eyes, aren't we? And I want to go and do a bit of research, see if I can find some crocodiles and see what their eyes look like. So I'll just show you because loads of you guys always say, why does it say this way to the museum on the side of my shop? It's because we're going this way. And there's the lab, which is where the real Resident Evil is going to break out from. And this is it. This is the outside of the museum. So here we are guys, and I'll tell you what, it's pretty spooky right now because there's no one in here. But let's see what we can find. I have to say I'm very surprised to find my ex-girlfriend here. Well, there's a beastie of a crocodile. What's his eye like? All right, so that's it, research done. So back to home base. So we're back at home base in the shop, guys. Hope you enjoyed the little trip up the road. And it's been an hour. So if we have a look at our shoes, our skins, there we go. They're dry now and they're much lighter and we've removed all the old polish. But as I say, they are dry. So we need to hydrate and moisturize this very delicate skin, which is why we've got Reptan. So Reptan is another Saphir product which is specifically designed for exotic reptile skins. Now, the difference between uh, Reptan and other conditioning creams comes with a little cloth, nice little touch. And that is because it contains lanolin. And lanolin is the exact ingredient that reptile skins need to stop the scales from peeling, cracking, uh, or going too hard. So we're just gonna grab some of this, get some on our cloth. <laughs> this is funny stuff, to be honest. It's like jelly, it really doesn't feel like a cream, it feels like jelly and delicately massage it onto our skin. Now I expect it to go darker again and then we'll have to let it dry and see how it looks. Once we've got our Reptan cream on, of course, we're just gonna let it soak in so it can work its magic, moisturize, hydrate, and then hopefully shine when we give it a buff. And as always, same with all of our products. If you happen to have some reptile skins and you want some Reptan, you can find it on our online shop, tringshrewrepairs.com, along with all of our other Saphir products. Okay, I'm gonna give that 15 and then buff it off. Hello. So that'll do it. There we go, how about that? That looks loads better, doesn't it? Okay, rock and roll. So there is our upper all restored and I think it looks fantastic already. The Reptan's really worked wonders on it. 
So now we need to start rebuilding the shoe. But before that, I want to do the eyes because I've done my research. I've got my bits that I need to make the eyes, so I'm gonna do it. But whilst I'm working, I've got to be really careful, guys, because one of the crocs from up the museum has actually followed me down here to the shop. Crikey, what a beastie. But let's try not to worry about him too much. Let's just focus on the job. Okay, I've got a plan, so let's make an eye. So I've got a few bits here. Here's my glass crocodile eye. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got some pretend reptile skin here, and we just need to dye it brown. Right, and now I've just got a little bit of paper, and I want to freehand a rough size of the eye itself. Okay, and then I can just cut him out and use it as a template to see what we're going to cut on the shoe. I had to make a judgment call. I couldn't decide whether to put the eyes down here near the front or up here, just past the laces. And I decided to go up here because I figured it looked more like a crocodile snout all the way down there if it's got a bit more length. So now for the scary part, we've got to cut through our skin. So what I'm gonna do is just cut through the very top layer, leave the lining intact, and that way we don't have to be too invasive with the shoe. And with any luck, there we go. That's just a little bit there. So now I've just opened up the lining so that I can get inside it and just stain the inside of the lining that we're gonna see if we look through from the inside out. So that's gonna be the background, the inside of our eye socket. So just stitching it back together and I'm doing it by hand just because I want to be very precise. It is decorative after all. So now we've got our little recess and I've stitched around the outside. We're just going to put a bed of resin in there so everything has something to sit on. It gives us a bit of a background. And while it's wet, I'm just going to plonk our eye in the middle. and then let it set for a while. And just to finish up our masterpiece, I've uh, cut some eyelids out, dyed them, got a bit more brown on there, and stick them on. Well, there we go. One crocodile eye in our shoe. I've got to do the other three. Uh, now I've got to say that's the first time I've ever done that and love it or hate it, it's definitely different. I actually think it's pretty cool. Look in its eye and tell me you don't like it. So I've got to finish up the other eyes, but then we need to get the new footbed in and attach the mock welt. Here's our mock welt, and it's a lovely neutral with white stitching, but we need it to be brown. So we're gonna run a bit of dye over it. Yeah. 
And voila, a one-way ticket to Brown Town. So there's our footbed and mock welt in place. Okay, so let's get a sole on. Da, 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 da. Now, although these aren't welted shoes where you'd have cavity for a cork, there is just a little bit of room to get a slither of cork in there. And I'm gonna do it just because the customer asked me if I could make them slightly more comfortable. And this will help make them just a little bit more cushioned. So our shoe's ready for glue. And so our, our soles, and you'll have noticed I've just put a cool little design on there in keeping with the crocodile theme. Now this is JR leather, the premium stuff. It just doesn't have the gold stamp on it. Sometimes they come plain and with stock running low at the minute, this is all we got left. But for now, let's get sticky. Gonna let that dry and once it's tacky you're gonna heat it up again and stick everything together i should have said i'm gluing the heels up at the same time and what we're using which is perfect are these vibram explosion and you see they're a reptile skin effect perfect for this job so let's get some glue on these and uh, i want to have a quick shout out to rachel thank you very much for the uh costa coffee voucher this one's on you much appreciated keeps me going through the day see my boots got my barkers here i'm just giving them a good old polish up because it's my friend johnny's wedding next weekend and i'm a groomsman so i want to have the shiniest boots there so obviously i'm using some sapphire mirror gloss to get them looking banging
a Blake stitch, we're not just hammering the stitches flat on the outside, but obviously they are on the inside of the footbed, so they need to be nice and flat also. Alright guys, so it's really starting to look the part. There's our sole on with its design, Blake stitched on, and you'll listen, we just put on Lulu French tips, and of course the Mockwell and our eye. So all that's left now is we need to get the heels on, uh, we need to do back linings and then just pop an insole in, and we're done. Oh crumbs! The croc's back! Oh no, he's after me! Crikey! So that's done. Now onto the back linings and insole. Pretty simple stuff. So the back lining is all tatty and peeling away. And of course we need to replace the insole to go over our new footbed. So for the heel insert that originally came out, which just said to put some new foam padding on. And for the lining, we've got this pretty striking orange calf leather. And the back linings we're also using calf leather also. This is the old lining. Don't want him because he's got a hole in it.
All right, guys, so that is our back linings done. And I don't know if you're going to see all the way down in there, but our cool orange sock liner. So now all we need to do is pop some new wax laces in and it's job done. There we go guys job done one crocodile shoe brought to life so i'm really happy with how the eyes came out and of course we've restored the uppers done the full jr soles new footbeds lulu toe plates the custom sole art vibram explosion heels back linings insoles the works so i think the customer is going to be really happy with these like i said we're going to get them back to belgium now you guys always like to know the cost of the jobs and to be honest this was a big job and if I was to price it honestly it would have been 450 500 pounds but I've done it for the customer for 395 because I really enjoyed making a video out of them so that's it that is the end of the video say goodbye to Crocky and if you made it all easy and hit like to be honest this is probably my favorite shoe repair that I've made a video on on the channel so I'm gonna like it myself and don't forget to check out our online shop tringshoerepairs.com if you need any reptan or other shoe care products there's actually quite a few new cool items on the website so check it out but that's it for now I'm getting out of here ah oh no the crocs got my foot Up in my face. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Ah, ah, Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Can you see my? Can you see me? No, it's fine. <laughs> it's gonna be impossible. <laughs> ah, 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 ah.